So there are a lot of different questions about the setup menu and what some of the parameters mean. So we're going to walk through the process input section and really what do some of those parameters do. So to access the menu like normal, we push and hold the button and we wait for it to let go. Um, like anything in Corona, very cool is that up here there's a little letter number combination. And as always, that relates to where we're at in the menu tree. So you'll see A. So the first one of the main menu is A. If I go down, you'll see it change to B, C, and so forth. So if we go in here, now we're at C1, which is process input. And that's kind of where we're going to sit for this, this particular video. So as we go into process input, what do these different things mean? So zero and offset, so that's where we're going to set up our zero on installation. Um, we're hoping that that takes care of any biases. It's also some of the other calibration um, things that you may have to take care of when you're doing your initial installation and, and commissioning. Um, density. So if you have a particular product, you know that the density is what it is, and you're seeing a deviation, um, again, if you, if you have that really dialed in and you want to do a calibration for density, you can do that. Um, you have some different options here. So calibration density mode, um, there's quite a few different ones. I want to highlight this fixed one because what that will allow you to do is basically assume a, a steady density no matter what passes through. Um, that can be valuable if you're having some slight gas entrainment and don't want to see these volume swings. Um, but there are some implications if you do um, leave that in place. But that is what that one means. Um, we're going to go stay to actual, um, and we're going to kind of go from there. So filters, this section is one of the ones that uh, is used quite often. So, for instance, if you have a meter and um, let's say that the piping is running from left to right, and for whatever reason, they installed this thing facing a tank. Well, they, they could have installed it to where it's the other way. And if flow is backwards based on the meter configuration, we can change this flow direction to backwards and that way we're getting the correct flow versus going, hey, do I have to turn the head around or do anything like that? So the meter does give us a true um, indication of direction. Uh, the suppression time is something that you're probably not going to see, but that's for handling basically some uh, measurement impacts due to pressure changes. Low flow cutoff, which is one that you may have to use quite regularly. Um, this is used to more or less buffer out instances of you know, low movement where not only does our uncertainty potentially increase, but where other things might happen in the system that you don't want to measure. So low flow cutoff can be one of those that we use quite often. Uh, system control is another function that's pretty neat. So what this does is it gives us a way to create a windowed condition where the meter won't read. So in this case, we're saying, you know, make flow zero if the temperature is above 212 and below 32. So in many cases, we I've used this for density in the past. And again, we're in gravity. So if my density was above 0.9 or below 0.7, I don't want it to measure. So in many cases in oil and gas, you may not want to measure water. So you can find sort of a balance point during your dump cycle to where this number um, helps you filter out measuring water, so you're just keeping track of oil if you haven't uh, invested in the concentration. Um, the, the other sections here are more informational and typically aren't going to be used that often for anything. So um, really those are the main sections that you're going to um, change to make the meter work best in your process. And again, like anything, if you've made changes, we back all the way out and we save.